Hello, introductory class. You've probably worked your way through a few of the intro activities at this point, and you've decided that uh, you've figured out how LEDs work, dimmer switches, push buttons, a few inputs and outputs. But this one's going to be a little bit different. This one we're going to talk about, I think we'll call this fun with variables, because we're going to add in a few cool pieces of code to make some stuff work leading into potentially your final project. Now, your final project for this class is going to be some sort of blinking light game. And what we're going to do today is actually going to make it work really, really well. It's actually going to make it work much better than you might otherwise. So take a look at what we've got here. I have hooked up a very simple Arduino board. We've got our power rails set up to negative and positive. We've got a whole bunch of 470 ohm resistors running out of the negative side, out of the ground. And then up top here, I've just put a smattering of LEDs. How many do I got here? Four, eight, nine of them. Uh, we got nine LEDs, and those nine LEDs are each connected to one of the digital I.O. pins, input and output pins. And right now, if we were to actually hook this up, I've got some code over here that's the basic blink. If we were to very simply test an LED, and when you're hooking up a physical Arduino board, this isn't a bad idea to do this. We could create a variable. I'm going to call it LED, okay? And I'm going to make that variable equal to, I don't know, what's our first LED here? Let's go 10, for example, okay? And then I'm just going to quickly swap out LED here in a few places. And you'll notice how this is kind of annoying. I have to replace that multiple times. Now if I want to change the pin on that, I only have to change one thing. This is one of the uses of variables. When I start this, I should get a blinking green LED in my pin 10 so that I know that everything works. I know my electrical's hooked up, I know my LED works. I could theoretically do this for each of the LEDs. Now, the other thing I can often use variables for is to replace a constant. You'll notice that right now I'm using the number 1000 here. That's 1000 milliseconds on delay. And that's actually a really good place to put in a new variable. I'm gonna call it timer. And I'm going to go create it as a universe, or global variable. int timer equals, and I'm going to keep it at 1000 for right now. But now, obviously, if I wanted to change my timer, I could very easily at the top of my code. Or in my code, if I wanted to change my timer, I could actually do that. And we're talking about arithmetic operators here in a second. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to set this up so that all of these LEDs will turn on. In this case, we're actually going to use a pin mode, and we're actually not going to use the normal, um, the normal what we talked just talked about. Now, there is a way to do this with variables. I'm not going to burden you with it right now, but you need to say I've got uh, LEDs on pins two, pin three, pin four, pin five, pin six, pin seven, pin eight, pin nine and pin 10. Okay, they're all configured as outputs. Life is good. Now, one of the things that we could do here is right now we replace this variable down here where it says LED in our digital right. We replaced it with a variable earlier. And the fun part with variables is that they are not constant. I mean, that categorically is why they're a variable. And that means that if we really wanted to, we could actually use this same piece of code here very simply to actually make all of the LEDs turn on and off. All we have to do is mess with this LED number. So what I'm going to do is go to the top and I'm going to change the LED number to the number 2. And one thing that I'm going to do here, this is going to happen at the beginning of my code, so every time I start the LED is going to be equal to 2. Now we know that 2 is going to activate, if we look at our drawing here, it's going to activate the first LED. Now one cool thing we can do is that this is going to turn the LED on for timer seconds, however many seconds that happens to be, and then off immediately after. So then going to wait timer seconds. I'm actually going to delete this second piece of code here, or this last piece of code here, because we're going to try to turn each LED on in sequence and do a scroll. Now how we do that is really simple. After this on line 23 here, we can actually create what's called an arithmetic operator, and we can actually edit that LED variable. So we're going to take LED, and we're going to make it equal to LED plus 1. Now that seems weird, right? You can reference a variable in its own line of code. You can, actually. And for some of you who've taken some coding courses before, you might also recognize this as LED plus plus. Okay? In this case, I'm going to put LED plus 1 just for the beginners to kind of see how this looks. Okay? Now what this is going to do within this loop is it's going to turn the second LED on, and then it's going to go down here to LED, and it's going to make the LED equal to 3, and it's going to run the code again. And then the LED is going to equal 4, and 5, and 6, and 7, and 8. So what we should see is this scroll through all nine of these LEDs when I start the simulation. And indeed, one LED per second, that's exactly what we see. Now to take this a little bit further, we can still continue messing with those variables. And in this case, once it goes beyond 10, it's going to actually just 
not turn on the LEDs. And that makes sense because right now it's probably turn, trying to turn on LED number 19 or something. And that's fine. That's exactly what we coded it to do. But let's say we didn't. Let's say we wanted it to actually go back to the start and keep scrolling. We can absolutely do that. In this case, all we're going to do is we're going to use an if statement. Now, when we use an if statement, we always have to put a condition in bra round brackets before the if statement. And the round brackets are going to allow us to use a some sort of comparison operator. Our comparison operators that are most common are equals, and yes, that is two equal signs. If you notice that the equal sign on line 23, it is telling the LED to become a new value. This is actually asking a question. The double equal sign is asking, are the two values, the things on the left, equal to each other? All right, so we're going to say if the LED equals, well, obviously we go to number 10. So if the LED equals 11 at this point, okay, we are going to do something. Now, after an if statement, you may put curly brackets unless you're only going to run one line of code. If you're only going to run the one line of code, you don't really need those. They're actually redundant because the if statement will run the next line of code only if there's a lack of curly brackets. So in this case, I don't really need them because all I want to do when that LED equals 11 is I want the LED to equal 2. Semicolon. Here we go. Now what this should do is allow us to scroll through each of these LEDs one at a time, very simply, and when it reaches beyond number 10, number 11, it's going to reset the variable back to number 2, and it's going to continue to run this sequence. Again, being in the loop, this will happen forever and ever and ever. That's just a very simple view of how you can use variables to control some of your hardware when working through some of these programs. Enjoy!